Pro Football Hall of Fame game, the kickoff to the NFL preseason, has been suspended due to weather in the area. About three minutes left in the third quarter, so we're going to go ahead and call it on our coverage. Don't know that that's going to get cleared up anytime soon or that they will even finish this football game. It is among preseason games about the most useless preseason game, but there's still plenty of takeaways, and it's still the first preseason game every single year the first taste of real NFL football that you get to start the season. And so just like me, you guys are degenerates. You just watched over a half of football, almost three quarters of football uh, without Caleb Williams, Romo Dunze, CJ Stroud, none of the big time names, but you were watching that game. And now you're here watching me talk about that game. Incredible stuff. It was really good though uh, to, to be able to watch some NFL football and it, it was a pretty entertaining game overall. We're going to dive into some of my top takeaways from this one um, tonight, about 10.30 Eastern time. Got a little bit of a Buffalo Trace pour. Let me know what you guys are drinking in the comment section below. Excited about it. It just feels right having a little pour of bourbon as the NFL season gets kicked off. So as I mentioned, none of the big names. No Caleb Williams, the first overall pick. His wide receivers, none of that good stuff. No C.J. Stroud, all his wide receivers, right? Pretty much none of the starters were out there. Uh, You did see Andre Johnson for the Texans, who's going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. They interviewed him. Stand-up guy, stand-up guy, even though I'm a Jacksonville Jaguar fan and reporter, analyst, whatever you want to call it. Andre Johnson roasted the Jaguars for a long time. Still a great guy. Devin Hester, Steve McMichael, Julius Peppers for the Bears, all getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. I know Julius Peppers is really more of a Panthers legend, but he did have four good years with the Bears there. Uniform watch for this football game. I'm just not a big fan of Texans' new uniforms. I thought that their old uniforms were better. Uh, Don't love the font, number font. Don't love the bullhorn on the sleeve. Just not a big fan of those ones. Like the older ones better. What do y'all think? Let me know in the comment section below. Hope everyone's ears are okay. All the squeaking on that broadcast. I don't know if that was the camera moving, what was going on, but uh, that was pretty irritating. Hopefully all the eardrums are good out there. But on a real note, new kickoff rule. That was probably the star of the show tonight. You know, learning moments for every special teams coordinator in this football game. Certainly you saw some confusion. You saw early movement several times. I think that's to be expected as NFL teams work through this throughout the preseason, even early on in the regular season. And, you know, there might be some moments where in important games this year, there are special teams errors because people just are not used to this this style of kickoff, right? You saw one touchback where the ball sailed into the end zone and now it comes out to the 30 if you kick it into the end zone. So that's another reason to keep it in play uh, between the goal line and the 20-yard marker uh, for the kicking team because you just you don't want to be giving them an automatic start at the 30-yard line. Um, definitely going to be interesting to see how that plays out. But the turf monster, it was pretty bad out there, I thought, especially on some of these kickoff returns. You saw guys sliding into contact. Um, hopefully everybody's okay after this one. Looking at, you know, offense and defense in terms of schematics in the preseason, especially in the Hall of Fame game, extremely vanilla. So not anything really to break down um, in a big way there, in my opinion. Some of the players, though, I think that's what you're looking for. The guys that are fighting for roster spots, maybe fighting for starting jobs in some cases. Um, You know, Juice Scruggs, Blake Fisher, Kenyon Green, all those guys played for the Houston Texans and Juice Scruggs starting center, right? Uh, Kenyon Green, he's going to be a guy competing uh, potentially for a starting job. And then Blake Fisher, their draft pick this year, um, day two pick. I think Blake Fisher has a chance to be a starter for them long term. And they were playing Blake Fisher left tackle, Kenyon Green left guard, and, and Juice Scruggs at center, three important guys for them. Thought they played well overall. Juice Scruggs is just so smooth, second-year player, plays with a lot of patience, a smart guy, and that's what you want out of a center, no doubt about it. You saw the nastiness that you saw from Kenyon Green a little bit at uh, at Texas A&M in college. That's just such a physical football player, and it hasn't really come together for him yet. He's dealt with injuries 
throughout his young career, but somebody uh, I'll always be pulling for. I was a big fan of him in the draft, even though he wasn't like a big time athlete. He just had that feel for the position and the mindset and the, the physicality, the tone setting that you love to see from a guy. And then Blake Fisher, very good athlete out of Notre Dame, played right tackle for them opposite Joe Alt. Um, he and Austin Booker had some battles, and Austin Booker, a guy who uh, kind of tore it up at the Senior Bowl, had unbelievable flashes on tape in 2023 at Kansas. He landed a nasty long arm early in the game on the first drive against Blake Fisher and uh, kind of sent Blake Fisher reeling, went to the ground, and uh, wasn't able to get to the quarterback because the quarterback got the ball out very quickly. But that was a nice move. And I thought they had some nice battles going back and forth with each other there. Austin Booker and Blake Fisher, I think two guys that are going to have futures in this league. Colin Johnson, my goodness. He's 6'6". He's a real big dude. Uh, got wide open for a touchdown early in the game, then had a, a big-time grab to go up and get it. Did it again, but that one got called back, got challenged by D'Amico Ryans, but then he was able to score another touchdown. So Colin Johnson, making plays, making plays. Big-time, big-time uh college football player out of Texas and a guy who, you know, is still fighting for his NFL career. And then Xavier Hutchinson, a Jacksonville guy, Bartram Trail High School, making some plays, a bunch of catches for uh, the Houston Texans, also had a jet sweep kind of play for eight yards, 66 total yards for him on the day. So he had a nice performance, another player fighting for a roster spot, two guys that um, I was pretty big fans of in the draft. And these guys are fighting for their NFL livelihoods, and you love to see them going out there and making plays, making the most of their opportunities. Roshan Johnson was running really hard for the Bears, Khalil, Khalil Herbert as well. The fact that these two guys were playing in this game is kind of a testament to the Bears' running back depth, but um, they were they were better than a lot of the opponents on the defense side of the ball for the Texans in this one. I think you could have seen a little bit better blocking up front, but it, it's hard to... Hard to really nitpick blocking in a preseason game where you're not getting a bunch of your starters out there, not getting guys that have a lot of cohesion and chemistry. Um, Texan side of things, Cam Akers. Wow. Just seeing him out there on the football field after having two Achilles injuries, that's incredible. Receiving touchdown for him. I thought you saw him looking slippery, making some guys miss in space in the hole, and uh, hopefully he can stay healthy and contribute because – He's a really talented football player and a guy who's obviously fought through a lot to be in the position he is in with the Houston Texans. Kalen Bullock was a really interesting draft prospect this year because an extremely light safety, but he can fly. He's got length. He was a middle field eraser at USC in coverage, but the question mark was really, is he going to be a liability as a tackler, as a pursuit player, as a safety, right? Because you got to be able to get guys to the ground. Well, lo and behold, he has a forced fumble, a touchdown-saving tackle on Khalil Herbert, five total tackles. He wasn't perfect, but I thought that was a very encouraging start for Kalen Bullock, who can really fly around in the middle of the field at safety, can be a, a single high type of guy, can certainly get in a bunch of other looks for you, cover two, a two high shell, and can do a lot in coverage and he's showing the willingness to get his nose dirty as well here for the Houston Texans. So that can end up being a steal down the road for them. They were able to uh, acquire Tommy Towns in this off season. Who's a really good punter. Saw him nail a 66 yarder for the Texans. Um, Fairbairn, their kicker, very good kicker, missed a 58 yarder, darn good, darn good kicker. But uh, obviously 58 yarder is not a gimme. Almost made it. Didn't quite make it though. The bears, they did not send Tory Taylor out there. They were using the backup punter, wanted to see Torrey Taylor, who they drafted in the fourth round, a really talented punter. A lot of people think he's going to be the best punter in the league very quickly. Wanted to see him, but weren't able to see him out there today in any punting situations. Final note here, Ben Skoranek. He had a 27-yard grab down the field. This is a guy who had a meteoric rise in the football world with the Los Angeles Rams as like a pseudo fullback doing all sorts of different things for that offense. He's now fighting to make a new team. And uh, he also had a really impressive one-handed grab that didn't really pick up anything, but that was badass to see. He can definitely bring some versatility to the Texans offense. And he's a guy, you know, they did a pick swap, sixth and seventh round pick swap with the Rams to acquire him. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out, no doubt about it. But overall, I thought it was a really fun pro football Hall of Fame game. Good start to the season. You know, 
I would say it's preseason week zero. Got preseason week one next week. You'll start to see some some starters actually getting in games over the next couple weeks and start to see some young guys like Caleb Williams who will get some action during the preseason uh, this year and probably Roma Dunze as well. Can't wait to see that because I think those guys are going to be electric together. The Bears, I have predicted that they're going to make the playoffs in the NFC. I think that the NFC North is going to be really well represented in the playoffs this year because the Bears, they just have a lot of talent on the defense side of the ball, well-coached defense. Um, they improved rapidly last year. And then obviously all the talent on the offensive side of the ball. I think Caleb Williams is going to be able to get it done and they're going to be able to get to the playoffs. And then the Texans, I think, could be one of the best teams in the AFC this year. I really do. Uh, really appreciate y'all tuning in. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Y'all have a good one.